The NFL is ruthless. Players can go from Super Bowl heroes to bench warmers in no time. Unfortunately for Russell Wilson, his fall from greatness has been one of the most bizarre stories in the NFL. After being traded away from Seattle, his time with the Denver Broncos has been mediocre at best and embarrassing at worst. In this trade, will it go down as one of the worst in NFL history? So, what the hell happened? Before the highs and lows of his NFL career, Wilson's story started back in Richmond, Virginia. Wilson grew up as a multi-sport athlete, but it was on the gridiron where he became a Virginia sports legend. As the quarterback for collegiate high school, he totaled 8,062 yards from scrimmage and 107 total touchdowns in his last two years, not to mention being named All-State and winning three state championships. But despite his accomplishments, Wilson was only rated a two-star recruit because he was viewed as too small to be successful at the next level. Level. Some college coaches even asked him to switch positions to defensive back. His only D1 offers came from NC State and Duke. He eventually settled on NC State because they believed in his ability to play quarterback. Wilson won the starting job as a redshirt freshman, but it wasn't until his sophomore season that he introduced himself to the national football audience by throwing 325 straight pass attempts without an interception, an NCAA record. His 31 touchdowns and 3,027 yards certainly helped too. In his final season with the Wolfpack, Wilson threw for 3,563 yards and 28 touchdowns. He led the ACC in yards per game and led NC State to a 9-4 record. But again, Russ's unreal production was met with more doubters. Wilson still had a year of college eligibility, but the MLB's Colorado Rockies also drafted him in the 2010 draft. He initially elected to join the Rockies for spring training and later decided to come back to NC State for his final football season. But there was a problem. As Wilson had described it, NC State didn't want him anymore. I called my former coach and I said, hey, I, I want to come back to NC State. He says, no, 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 you just go focus on baseball. You're not going to you're not gonna be able to make it in football. So he transferred. Wisconsin was happy to give him a home, and his following campaign went down as one of the best quarterbacking seasons in school history. Wilson threw for 3,175 passing yards and 33 touchdowns while throwing just four interceptions. Wisconsin went 11-3, winning the Big Ten's first ever championship game. Russ had something to prove in his senior season, and he did it with an exclamation point. He had put himself firmly on the NFL radar ahead of the 2012 draft, but the doubters still remain. Wilson went to the NFL Combine and quickly impressed scouts, but just like in the transition to college, his height was a major issue. Super Bowl winning head coach John Gruden probably summed it up best. The only issue with Russell Wilson is his height. That might be the reason he's not picked in the first couple rounds. Entering the 2012 draft, Wilson's projected draft position was all over the place. He had a fantastic college resume, but the NFL is less about what you've done and more about what you can do. There were no clear suitors for Russ. So when the Seahawks took him in the third round of the draft, it was a surprise to the rest of the league. With the 75th pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Russell Wilson, quarterback, Wisconsin. See, Seattle had just signed free agent Matt Flynn to compete with Tavares Jackson for the starting job. With the Green Bay Packers, Flynn had shown that he was ready to get his first real chance to be a starter. So why did the Seahawks add an undersized project QB that could flip and go play baseball at any time? Well, Seattle believed in his arm and decided to gamble on his ability to adapt to a bigger, faster game. And it was arguably the best decision in their franchise history. Before the regular season, Wilson showed that he was less of a project than everyone expected and beat out Flynn and Jackson for the starting job. You know, obviously my goal is to be great. I got a long way to go, um, but I'm just going to keep working. A new era was officially underway for the Seahawks. Almost immediately, all of the concerns about Wilson's size were silenced. Russ had one of the best rookie seasons we've ever seen from a quarterback, with 3,118 yards, 26 touchdowns, and just 10 interceptions. Wilson made the Pro Bowl, but more importantly, helped Seattle win 11 games and get back to the playoffs. While the Seahawks fell just short in the divisional round against the Atlanta Falcons, there was an excitement in Seattle because they found their QB of the future, but it was just a taste of what was to come. You know, right before I got back to the tunnel, walking off the field, I got so excited for the next opportunity next year, you know, of 
looking forward to, to what we have in the future. We have a great football team. The Seahawks in 2013 were an absolute wagon. The team was employing Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, and the Legion of Boom at the height of their powers and had Marshawn Lynch trucking defenders on offense. Add in Russell Wilson with a year of experience, and you have a team ready to take over the league. The second-year QB threw for more yards, fewer interceptions, and his 8.2 yards per attempt was top five in the league. Seattle opened their 2013 campaign with an incredible 11-1 record, and Wilson was surgical with 22 touchdowns and six interceptions over that span. In the Seahawks' entire franchise history, they'd never had a start like that. The Hawks were pretty much unbeatable at home. Wilson's first home loss of his entire career didn't come until Week 16 against the Cardinals. He was 14-0 before that. Seattle finished the season with a 13-3 record, locking up the NFC West title and the NFC's number one seed. But now, it was time to win in January. Up first, the New Orleans Saints in the divisional round. Wilson only threw for 103 yards in the game, but that was partially because Marshawn Lynch ran all over the Saints with 140 yards and two scores. The divisional round was an indicator of his general performances in that playoff campaign. Not otherworldly, but confident and mistake-free. The NFC Championship was a rematch with the 49ers. Seattle swept San Fran in the regular season, but it was a different challenge to do it in the playoffs. And it's hard to beat a team three times. Wilson had to make big plays for Seattle to win the game, and he clutched up when it mattered most. Fourth quarter, down 17-13 and facing a fourth and seven at the 49ers' 35. San Francisco had locked down the offense for the majority of the game, and Seattle needed a spark. Enter Dangerous. Wilson took the snap, saw Jermaine Curse heading toward the end zone, and delivered one of the most clutch plays of his career. Seattle never looked back after that. The Seahawks were on to the Super Bowl for just the second time in franchise history. And to say that Seattle and Wilson were ready for Super Bowl 48 is the understatement of the century. Hey, at the beginning of the year, I asked you, boys, why not us? We're here for a reason. We're here for a reason. And let's go prove the night. The Legion of Boom stonewalled the Broncos' high-powered offense, and the Seahawks won 43-8. Wilson threw for 206 yards and two touchdowns to put an exclamation point on football's ultimate achievement. Russ proved every doubter wrong as he became the shortest QB to ever win a Super Bowl. Not only that, but he did so in just his second year in the league. Wilson reached the top of the mountain, but getting back to the peak would prove much more difficult. Seattle was built to stay competitive, so there was no Super Bowl slump in the 2014 season. The Seahawks went 12-4 in the regular season, and Russ really showed his dual-threat ability down the stretch. While he only passed for 20 touchdowns, he upped his passing yards to 3,475, but it was his rushing ability that gave defenses nightmares, as he put up a career-best 849 yards on the ground and six touchdowns. He also led the NFL in rushing yards per attempt with 7.2 yards per carry. After a second straight NFC West title that season, Wilson had an up-and-down playoff campaign. After 268 passing yards and three touchdowns in the divisional round, Wilson threw four interceptions in a tight 28-22 win over the Packers in the NFC Championship. The following Super Bowl against the New England Patriots was the stop of legend. Seattle had a 10-point lead late in the game, but of course, Tom Brady put together a legendary comeback. So the game, the spotlight, the pressure was on Wilson. He needed to put together a game-winning drive. With two completions over 30 yards, Seattle quickly entered the red zone with plenty of time. Facing second and goal from the one, the Hawks only needed three feet, with one of the league's best power backs in the backfield. Instead, they chose to throw, a choice that still haunts Seahawks fans. Wilson threw a quick pass that was intercepted by Malcolm Butler to secure the win for the Patriots. Even a decade later, Richard Sherman's face tells the whole story. Instead of the extremely rare feat of back-to-back -back Super Bowl wins, the Seahawks were left with devastation. That day was a turning point for Wilson and the Seahawks. They were still good, but the locker room was never really the same. Initially, Russ bounced back in a big way. He threw for over 4,000 yards and 34 touchdowns in 2015, the best season of his career to that point. But the Seahawks' roster had begun regressing, and it became clear that it was Wilson's team now, rather than one built on defense and the run game, which caused a division between Russ and the other star players. Seattle went 10-6 in the regular season before a divisional round exit in the playoffs. In 2016, Marshawn Lynch retired, so the offense was completely dependent on the arm of Russell Wilson. 
and it showed. He threw for the most passing yards of his career with 4,219, but also threw double-digit interceptions for the first time since his rookie year. And once again, they won the NFC West title, but playoff success was limited. Another good year, another divisional round exit. Now there was concern creeping in that the Seahawks Super Bowl window was shut, and in some ways, their 2017 campaign confirmed it had. Wilson led the NFL with 34 passing touchdowns, but the Seahawks went 9-7. and He was putting up better numbers than ever, but Seattle collapsed late in the season, losing three of their last four games. For the first time in Wilson's NFL career, the Seahawks missed the playoffs. By that point, the roster from the 2013 Super Bowl season was starting to change significantly. Wilson had been handed a major contract in 2015 and was playing at a high level, but once the quarterback gets paid, teams struggle to pay big money at other positions, and nearly the entire Legion of Boom departed after the 2017 season. Despite nothing short of fantastic quarterback play from Russ over the next three seasons, the Seahawks just could never get over the hump in the playoffs. Wilson threw for over 4,000 passing yards twice in that span, and even hit the 40 touchdown mark as a passer in 2020. But Seattle was seemingly cursed, never getting past the divisional round and losing by less than a touchdown twice. But that's not to take away from Wilson's individual accomplishments. He made the Pro Bowl in nine of his first 10 seasons, and the Seahawks only missed the playoffs once between 2012 and 2020. At that point, the Seahawks had never had a losing season with Wilson as the starter. But the run was coming to an end, and with it, Wilson's career trajectory nosedive. Entering 2021, it's important to know that the Seahawks had made a roster-defining trade for safety Jamal Adams. And I'm just excited to be to be here um, I'm, I'm here to help and you know i can't wait to get out there in front of the 12s they gave up two first round picks and then some meaning they had little draft capital to enhance the depth of their team let's just say that came back to bite them as 15 different players spent time on the injured reserve. Even with those issues, Wilson played relatively well. He threw for 3,113 yards, 25 touchdowns, and only six interceptions. But Seattle struggled to win games, going 6-8 and eight in the 14 appearances Wilson made. They would finish 7-10 and 10 on the season, miss the playoffs, and were in desperate need of team-rebuilding resources. Then, Seattle's front office saw an opportunity. Wilson had continued to play well, but was approaching 34, and was was on a huge contract. In other words, Russ could be dealt so that the Seahawks could rebuild. As it turns out, the Denver Broncos were willing to pay a hefty price. Uh, Russell Wilson is headed to the Denver Broncos. Denver handed Seattle two first-round picks, two second-round picks, and three players for Wilson and a fourth-rounder. The Seahawks had officially pulled the curtain on the Wilson era, cashing out in a big way. This is a, an extraordinary opportunity for us to help our, our franchise. For the first time in his career, Russ was outside of Seattle, and there was a reason for optimism. I'm excited for the next decade. I'm excited for 2.0 version of me. Sure, Denver had sold the farm for Wilson and then handed him a five-year, $242 million contract. But it was a fresh start with an offensive coach in Nathaniel Hackett, and the Broncos boasted a defense with exceptional secondary and pass-rushing talent. It seemed like a recipe for success, only instead of success, Success, Denver witnessed disaster. The Broncos' coaching was a nightmare, and Wilson was concerningly ineffective, throwing for 3,524 yards with just 16 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. His QB rating dropped nearly 20 points from his final season in Seattle, as the Broncos went 4-11 and with him as a starter. Optimism around Wilson from the previous season had evaporated. The organization knew change was necessary, so they fired Hackett after one season, electing to bring in Super Bowl winning coach Sean Payton to try and get Russ going. But that just didn't happen. The Broncos started the season 1-5 and, and seemed like an even bigger critical failure. But Russ heated up, winning five straight games with eight touchdowns and zero interceptions over that stretch. The problem was that it couldn't last. Over Wilson's next four starts, Denver went 1-3, and, and he turned the ball over seven times. Even with the two losses late in the season, the Broncos weren't eliminated from playoff contention, but they still benched their $242 million QB anyways. Why? Because they signed a bad deal. Wilson's contract featured a $37 million injury guarantee for 2024. Denver tried to renegotiate midseason due to Russ's underwhelming performances, but he didn't budge. They told me that uh, if I didn't change my contract, 
you know, that I'd, I'd be benched for the rest of the year. I mean, no one gives up a salary like that. So Sean Payton and the Broncos sat him just to have the flexibility to get rid of him in the 2024 offseason. Two years prior, Denver was happy to pay an arm and a leg for Wilson. Now they're figuring out how they can mitigate the financial damage. Cutting Wilson means that the Broncos will potentially have $84 million in dead cap, $84 million paid to a player that won't be part of the organization. In many ways, you can't tell the story of the NFL in the 2010s without Russell Wilson. He wasn't just good, he was consistently great for nearly a decade. But in the 2020s, it's been the polar opposite. Wilson is far removed from his early greatness, and it seems like Mr. Unlimited's best days may be behind him. Life comes at you fast, but so does Blitz. So stick with us for the best NFL content on YouTube.